the Balkans, 1944. The oil fields in Ploesti, Romania, are Hitler's main source of oil. They are heavily defended by anti-aircraft guns which hit many US aircraft. If hit, American pilots were instructed to fly over the Danube into the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is under Axis occupation. Nevertheless, it has a strong resistance movement known around the world as the Chetniks. They were a guerrilla force formed from the remnants of the Yugoslav army. The Chetniks have saved more than 500 pilots from Nazi capture. Once on safe ground, the pilots wanted to meet the Chetnik commander, General Draža Mihailović. For them, he was a legend. At the start of the war, these pilots were just boys who grew up with the mainstream entertainment of the time, comic books. The golden age of comics in the US began in the 30s and lasted until television entered American homes. During the war, characters based on actual heroes joined the ranks of fictitious ones such as Phantom and Superman. They were mainly drawn from the armies of the great allied powers. The most notable exception to this rule was General Mihailovich, who was from the relatively small Yugoslav army. His character appeared in at least nine US comics. Why was General Mihailovich the exception? How did he become a legend in US popular culture? Who was General Mihailovich? Ivanitsa, Western Serbia, the birthplace of General Draža Mihailović. From when he was born, only one of these buildings still stands, the church. Dragoljub Draža Mihailović, rođen je 14. aprila 1893. godine po starom kalendaru. Draža je kršten u ovoj crkvi 2. maja iste godine. Dražu je krstio sveštenik Jovan Ajdačić. Ovo je kopija originalne krštenice Draže Mihajlovića koju sam pronašao u crkvenoj knjizi. Today it is difficult to determine where his father Mihajlo's house was located. It is assumed that it stood at the end of the main street on the right hand side. Many years later, as is often the case with famous men, Draža returned to his birthplace but this time cast in bronze. Before he came back, his name was forbidden for a long time. In the whole of Yugoslavia, it was displayed in only one place, on the headstone of his parents' grave in Ivanitsa. He erected the monument together with his sister Yelitsa. Ovo su grobovi draženih roditelja oca Mijajla i majke Cmiljane. Draža je potpisan kao Dragiša jer su ga tako zvali u porodici kad je bio mali. Draža's parents, Mihailo and Smiljana, died young from tuberculosis. Draža and his sister Jelica moved to Belgrade in 1901. They moved in with their uncle Velimir, a major in the veterinary corps. This is the first photo taken in Belgrade. This is also the only known photo of Jelica. She was murdered by the communists after they captured Belgrade at the end of 1944. A few postcards that Jelica sent to Draža during World War I were saved. Jelica was one of the first female architects in Serbia. Draža was an excellent student. According to his fourth grade report card, he was not talented for singing and gymnastics. In all other subjects, he received the highest marks. In the third Muško gymnasium, Draža was written in 1904. When he entered the third grade, in 1906, the gymnasium was moved to this place, and then the building was built. Draža's military career started on September 1, 1910, when he enrolled in the military academy in Belgrade, in its 43rd class. He chose a military career, as he later wrote, believing that the army is ruled by an absolute quest for justice. He graduated fourth highest in his class. 
The building of the officers club in Belgrade, dating back to that period, still exists. The strategist that marked the period of Draža's studies was Serbian general, later field marshal, Radomir Putnik. It was a time of great change in warfare. The advent of machine guns and fast-loading cannons meant that infantry could no longer advance in tight formations. A soldier in a unit could now be over 100 meters from where an officer was. In battle, he could not hear orders. Lower-ranking officers also might not be able to hear their superior officer's commands. The main idea of General Putnik was to train officers and even ordinary soldiers to autonomously assess battle situations and act in the spirit of received orders by relying on knowledge gained in the field. For Putnik, a soldier was not just a cog in a machine, but an individual with his own initiative and the freedom to express it. The Serbian army effortlessly implemented this principle because of a tradition that was already embedded in its operational doctrine. Officers were trained to treat soldiers like brothers and friends and to act as parents. Also, this principle was consistent with the Serbian mentality, characterized by the individual initiative, imagination and non-conformity to the prescribed formalities. The doctrine of General Putnik was used in the training of the 43rd class. Draža Mihailovic turned out to be the best student of General Radomir Putnik. At first, it can be observed in non-adherence to formalities. For example, he often wore his cap irregularly, in this way expressing his individual flair. But it was also observed in matters of substance, as he was always vocal in expressing his opinion. However, not all of his superiors liked that. Thus, Mihailovic's army life was marred by a paradox. He was last to be promoted in his class, although he was amongst the first to be decorated for service in battle. Mihailovic completed his military academy training in breaks between wars. In the officer's records, we see that until 1920, he participated in five wars. The Serbian-Turkish War of 1912-1913, Serbian-Bulgarian War of 1913, Albanian Rebellion of 1913, the Great War 1914 to 1918, and Albanian insurgency of 1920. Throughout an officer's career, his characteristics were recorded by the higher command. Mihailovic was impeccable. Here is an observation of one of his superiors. Always keeps a cool head, shows great courage, accompanied by high morale and personal initiative. Demonstrated capable leadership of his men and the entire unit. At the end of this period, Draža Mihailovic was rewarded with 10 medals, including gold medals for valor, two white eagles with swords, and an English military cross. The involvement in the suppression of the Albanian revolts played a major role in his future career, because these were guerrilla wars. But of greatest importance was the fact that in every one of these five wars, the Serbian army was victorious. The high morale and winning spirit of Mihailovic's generation was formed as a result of these victories. Belgrade, August 11, 1913. Knez Mihailova Street is decorated for the celebration of a major event that will forever be remembered by Mihailovic and his contemporaries. That morning, on what is now known as Slavia Square, a Serbian army parade was held after winning two wars in quick succession, the First and the Second Balkan Wars. In this video, we see the famous strategist, General Radomir Putnik. The high morale of the Serbian military was reflected by the entire nation. Draža Mihailovic married in 1920. His wife was Jelica Brankovic, the sister of his classmate and best friend Borivoje, who was killed in the Battle of Tser. In these photos, we see Draža and Jelica at a family function in Novi Sad. During the third decade of the 20th century, Mihailovic graduated from the Superior College of the Military Academy and acquired the rank of General Staff Officer. This title is the equivalent of today's Doctor of Military Sciences. 
throughout the kingdom, there were only 160 general staff officers in total. As an elite officer, he served in the King's Guard. Afterwards, he was sent for specialization to France in the field of intelligence. Mihailovic later was posted as a military attaché of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in Sofia and then Prague. Around that time, he appeared on the front pages of the Belgrade press, where the general public first heard of him. Before he bought his house, Draža Mihailovic and his family lived in the Belgrade suburb of Senjak. He owned a boat and enjoyed spending time at the city's most popular bathing spot, Ada Tsiganlia. This photo shows Draža with his friends at this location. He paid off the last instalment for his house, located at 24 Bregalnica Street, right before the Great War started. This house still stands today. He kept many animals, including two horses, and at the front of his house, his car was parked, a black Chevrolet. Upon completing his career as military attaché, Draža Mihailovic returned to Belgrade and taught strategy and tactics at the military academy. Later, he was given the post of commanding a regiment in Slovenia, near the border with Austria. This was shortly after Hitler's annexation of Austria. Colonel Mihailovic was ringing alarm bells by then. He stated, Hitler is already on our border. At some point he will cross it. Our military cannot resist him. The outcome of modern warfare is decided by tanks and aviation. There is no comparison on that level between us and the Germans. However, we must not capitulate either. Colonel Mihailovich put forth a plan of defense based on two key points. First, the army should be divided into three separate parts, Serbian, Croatian and Slovenian. The kingdom had three constituent nations. He believed one of these three, the Croatians, would not go to war against Hitler. Secondly, the military should withdraw from all major cities and northern plains. The Serbian part of the army was to concentrate in the wooded mountains between western Bosnia and southwestern Serbia. The rugged mountainous terrain would thwart Hitler's advantage in mechanized war and to a large extent in aviation. The backbone of this defense plan was to be formed by deploying specially trained units, the Chetnik battalions. Colonel Mihailovic wrote their training manual. By then, the Putnik doctrine in the Yugoslav army was replaced with the German military doctrine, which viewed the soldier as part of a machine, not as an individual. The main proponent of the German doctrine was General Milan Nedic, who was appointed Minister of Defense in 1939. When Colonel Mihailovic submitted his report on Nedic's defense plan, Nedic sent him to prison for a month. The construction of fortifications along the northern border, which Mihailovic called a waste of money, continued with an increased intensity. However, one of Mihailovic's proposals was adopted. On April 24, 1940, the General Staff announced the establishment of the Chetnik Command as the operational base for the training of special units. It was three months before the British Army began deploying their special units, and two years before the Americans did the same. Ono što ja mogu da kažem to je da su oni u obuci za gerilsko ratovanje, kao što su ove zelene beretke bile, koji sam ja, da je tu iz o gerilskom ratu isticano ovaj organizacija Draža Mihajlovića i Draža Mihajlović kao gerilski vođa. I ulazilo se u način borbe, organizovan je jedinica i tako dalje. Slavko Belajac je napisao knjigu za obuku zelenih beretki o gerilskom ratovanju. To je bilo njegovo iskustvo gerilskog ratovanja u zapadnim krajevima. Slavko Bjelajac je doguro do čina rezervnog generala i bio je sa službom u Pentagonu. 